Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I will hopefully be reading next month in November. I'm so happy that it's November. I want the weather to finally change in Texas. It is grotesquely hot and muggy and I just want that like fall weather. We're not getting it here and it's devastating. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna stop complaining. <laughs> um, today I'm gonna talk about the 12 books that I will hopefully be reading in November. Normally I do talk about 16 books that I wanna read, um, but I made my list kind of shorter this month because like I have found my mood reader self not be very happy with a large TBR. So I've cut it down a little bit. So these are all books that I am very excited to read. And like I'm crossing my fingers that I will actually read in November because they're on the top of my TBR right now. The first three books I'm gonna talk about are new releases that are either coming out at the end of October that I wanna read in November, or these books actually come out in November. The first one that I have is Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. I actually have an arc of this book that I need to pick up any day now, but I have been dying for this book <laughs> ever since Tori talked about it. I love Tori's book so much, so I, I've been dying for this, chomping at the bit, and I'm gonna pick up the arc of it very soon. This is the romance between Ollie and Jack. They are best friends, and they end up, I think, going to a Jane Austen, like, Regency fair, where they have to, like, dress up as people from Jane Austen books. The hero of the story is a hockey player, so I'm very excited about that, and I'm pretty sure it also has endometriosis representation. I love Tori's representation, its own voices, in every single one of her books, so Oh, there's a fly going around. Anyway, um, its own voices and she does it so phenomenally well. I can't wait for this. The cover is stunning. It looks so good. Jane Austen fair with like dressing up. It's friends to lovers and he's a hockey player that ticks so many of my boxes. This one comes out on November 7th. A book that comes out on November 1st is Trick Shot by Kayla Gross. This one has been talked about for a while on Kayla's Instagram. I follow her. She wrote a cowboy romance I really enjoyed, and this is an MMF, like, holiday book. It's gonna put me in the total, like, holiday mood. I'm very excited. That's all I know about it is that it's MMF, and that it's a very hot, and the cover is muy bueno. It's very good. So, um, I've been reading also some excerpts on her Instagram with, like, quotes and stuff, and it's gonna be a hot book. It's, like, novella length. It's, like, 190 pages, I want to say, but I am very excited to pick this one up. And the last new release that I would love to mention is Surviving Scar by Ruby Dixon. This is her second book in the Ice Planet Clone series. This one comes out on Halloween. So the very last of the month, I'm not gonna be able to read this whole book in a day. I have work on Halloween. So I'm gonna move it to like my November TBR, but I know nothing about this book um, except that it's the next book in the Ice Planet Clone series, which I loved um, the first one about Arjal, Arjal's Resonance. So, I can't wait for this one and she's killing it with these covers. They're so cool. The next book that I have is another Ruby Dixon book. I have some holds on Libby that I would love to get to. Oh my gosh, this bug is flying around. Anyway, so um, my Libby finally got Bethia, which is one of Ruby's newest audiobooks. I'm still waiting for Bound to the Shadow Prince. I want that so badly to like come on my Libby. I'm like dying for it. Anyway, Bethia is one of the very few books that I have not read by Ruby. It's one of her most recent releases. Um, it's book number five in the Corsair Brothers series. These are chunky monkey books. And I personally don't read eBooks that are like over 500 pages. Like it's a slog to get through for me. I would much rather listen to them. So that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the audiobook of this one. You've met Bethia throughout the whole series. Um, she's popped up as like side characters in the Corsair Brothers series, but also the Corsair series. She's popped up in multiple books and she's just a funny, fun, kick A character. And this is an FFM romance, which is Ruby's first step into doing FFM. I hope I love this one. I really love Bethia like as a side character. So I hopefully will love her as a main character as well. Next is a buddy read. I'm going to be buddy reading Tide by Kieran Cole with Zay over at Witty Reads. I'll link her channel down below. I love her so much. She's my bestie. I love her. And so yeah, we both have read Torn 
and I read it like a month or two ago. Um, I don't remember when Zay read it, but I remember when I was reading Torn, she was like, I haven't read book two yet. Maybe we could read that one together. And finally I told her this month, I was like, let's do it. And she was like, yes. All I know is that this one is an age gap romance. I think we met the hero in book one and he's like the town bad boy or something. Like people are scared of him because of something that either happened to him or he did. I don't know. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I don't want to spoil myself. But this is his romance, I think, with a girl, a young woman. He ends up saving from being kidnapped in the woods, I think, if I remember correctly, or that's a different Kieran Cole book. But I don't want to spoil myself for this. I'm going to go in blind um, with deeply emotional, like, uh, contemporary romances. I do not like to go in, like, knowing a lot. So... Um, I hope I love this one with Zay. We're gonna have so much fun buddy reading this. Another audiobook that just came on my Libby is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. I know that a lot of people have been talking about this book and have been recommending this book, especially if you love small town cowboy romances. This is a romance between Emmy and Luke, and I think this is brother's best friend. And she has to come back to her small town after leaving it to like go to college and stuff. And I think she experienced an injury and can't uh, ride horses anymore. She was a horseback rider. And yeah, Luke cannot help himself once he sees her when she comes back to town. This looks really good. I've heard amazing things and I love me a good cowboy. Next, I have In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. So many people have recommended this book to me. They tell me all the time that I'm gonna love this book. So high expectations here, but I read book one in October and I definitely want to read this one. This is giving me fall vibes. I want the, all the fall vibes. I don't know if this takes place during the fall, but that's what the cover is giving me. And I think this is about Beckett who was like the town grump, but everyone's like obsessed with him because he's so good looking, who like lives on the Christmas tree farm and runs the Christmas tree farm with the heroine from book one and his romance with I think like the social media influencer we met in book one. Her name is Evelyn, right? Evelyn and Beckett. So, and I think they had like a one night or many night happenstance a few months ago and they reconnect all over again. So this looks really good. I think Beckett is also like a huge animal lover and takes care of a lot of animals. So you know me, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a man who has a bunch of pets. This next one I've been putting off for a while because um, I know it's going to rip my heart out, but it's the first book in the Beautiful Hearts Duet by Emma Scott. Uh, this is bringing down, Bring Down the Stars, and I have book two as well. I got this at Book Bonanza, and Emma Scott got it signed for me. Um, so I know I've been like putting this one off because her duets like are so heartbreaking, but like they end on a good note. They always end in a happily ever after. There's just a lot you got to go through to get the HEA. Um, but I think this is like a love triangle where our hero in this book, his brother is like dating the girl of his dreams. And that's the heroine of this duet. So that's all I know about it. I'm going to go in blind again. I don't want to know a lot about these books, but um, I have the audiobook on Libby. So that's how I'm going to be reading it. But I do have a physical copy as well, obviously. So um, yeah, I'm like, I've been like holding some of these books off from Emma Scott because like, they're just so emotional, but I am in the emotional romance mood. Like I, I want to cry. I think I want to cry. I want to cry reading a good book. <laughs> I would love to pick up 40 Love by Olivia Dade this month as well. I read book one in the series, which was Teach Me. And I really enjoyed it. That's about two like older characters who are teachers falling in love. And this one just looks so good. I mainly read book one so I could get to this one because it's the second book in this series. The heroine of this one, we have plus size representation and she is older than the hero. And I think I've heard like this neat, cute moment a few times from my friends when they talk about this book, but I think she's swimming in the ocean and her bathing suit like gets swept away or something. And the hero who I think is like a lifeguard maybe, or just a guy at the beach like, helps bring her back onto shore without anybody like noticing she's not wearing anything. Um, and I think they like play tennis together or something like that. Like it sounds really fun. I need a good fun like rom-com-esque book. So I hope this will fill my void. Next I have Brother Song by TJ Klune. I know I was supposed to read this book last month, but some things happened and I was unable to for the Green Creek read along. So I definitely want to finally finish out the series. I've been loving these werewolf shifter romances and this is one that's like everyone's favorite, specifically Samantha, so I can't wait to pick this one up. Um, all I know is that it's about two characters we've already met in the series 
and I don't want to spoil anything in case you haven't read these books but I'm very much looking forward to this couple this pairing I've mainly been waiting on the audiobook through Libby to come in because it is like 25 hours and that's very expensive to buy on audible so I've been waiting on the audiobook to come in through Libby so I can listen to it for free so it just came in my library like two days ago so I'm definitely gonna get on it as soon as possible but I am loving the series. I'm loving TJ Klune's writing. I'm loving all of his relationships, the found family aspects, the paranormal aspects. And I'm excited to see what happens in this like conclusion, concluding, I think this is like, I don't think he's writing anything else after this, right? Samantha, if you're watching this, tell me, is this the last book in this series? Like, is he done? Or is there gonna be more? Anyway, so if this is the last book in the series, I am looking forward to see how like, the whole series like wraps up and concludes with all of our characters that we love so dearly. Next I have The Maybon Feast, I think that's how you pronounce that, by C.M. Nascosta. I just wanted to put on a few like monster alien novellas that I could get to and this one is fairly short. How long is it? It is only 75 pages and it looks like he's a spider creature. That's all I know. <laughs> um, and I really wanted to find another C.M. Nascosta book that I like. Um, because I did love um a rogue uh, to ravish rogue. There's the title. <laughs> I always get stumped up with that title, <laughs> but I really did love that one. So maybe I'll like this one. I have liked a few other like spider monster creature books. So hopefully this one will be it. And the last book that I have is another like monster book, but this looks like so fun. <laughs> this is called Tusk and Puck by Zora Black. Like combine hockey with monster romances? Yes, please. Okay, I'm gonna read the summary for this one. It says, this orc hockey player is a major hottie, but can he score with me? As my nephew's guardian and a school nurse, hockey is a big no. That is until the team's new coach showed up with his killer slap shot and stunning bod, saying no got a lot harder. Injuries aren't the problem. The real challenge is coach Beefcake, <laughs> a charming orc who doesn't care how much I complain about his risky drills. Somewhere between concussion checks and dodging pucks, I start falling for the hunk behind the bench, but one wrong step and we could find ourselves with more problems than just broken hearts. I'll risk everything for a shot, with this charming orc but will our love score the goal or will our hearts end up in the penalty box like that sounds so cute it's under 200 pages but like sounds so stinking cute it has pretty good ratings only five people have rated this on amazon so like I i'm looking forward to it i need like a pick me up like cutesy book like this anyways there you have it those are the 12 books that i will hopefully be getting to in november they're all on the top of my tbr let me know what you want to read in november i would love to know and also let me know what you think about any of these books, I would also love to know that. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any hockey related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.